What's up guys, mainly hockey cards here, and today we're looking at all 50 young guns from this year's 2022-23 Upper Deck Series 2. I will give an investment potential letter rating from F to A plus for each card. In general, I see Fs as cards to stay away from, Ds as players with limited to no potential for value, Cs as players that are on the fringe of having more value but look more like depth players, Bs as players that have increasing potential but may have inconsistencies or uncertainties, and As as players that are the highlights of the product and have the highest potential value ceiling. It is important to note I am not a financial advisor. Please do your own due diligence and research before investing in anything or anyone. Let's get Series 2 going. Yuraj Slavkovsky, the Canadian's first overall pick in this last draft, highlights this array of rookies. I think that with his talent and in the market he's in, it's an A+. Pavel Ragenda, a 23-year-old winger, has three points in his first 14 NHL games. Weak market, though, C+. Samuel Poulin is a rookie that Penguins fans can finally get excited about. However, he has stepped away from Wilkes-Barre for personal reasons. He has a solid amount of potential, and I wish nothing but the best for him going forward and hopefully resuming playing soon. B. Niels Amon likely tops out as a bottom six forward. Points-wise, there's not a whole lot of potential here. C-. minus. Brandon Biro is over a point per game in the AHL this season and played just one NHL game last season. He is already 25, and Buffalo's core is coming together, so the clock is starting to tick, and I wonder if he gets a shot somewhere else instead. B-. Jaden Halbgawax is 26 years old, appeared in three NHL games last season, and now plays in Sweden. Not ideal. D-. Michael Isamont has 13 points in 50 NHL games this season between three teams. Being in Tampa now, I wonder if they can bring more out of the late-blooming 26-year-old. C. Cole Reinhardt is a 23-year-old left wing that has about a half a point per game in the AHL. Nothing stands out here, but still some time. C-. minus. Wyatt Johnston is enjoying a terrific rookie season in Dallas with 36 points in 71 games, including 21 goals and adds to a pretty deep roster of young talent at forward. I think the Dallas market is definitely trending upwards. At just 19, he's for me an A+. Brandon Baddock had 6 points in 61 AHL games this season, is 27, and has one game of NHL experience from last year. He's not even in the Montreal system anymore. F. Dylan Holloway is a promising winger for the Oilers. In his first NHL season, he's had a rough go of it with 9 points in 51 games, but still remains a promising young player. Market and potential to play with some of the league's best helps this a lot too. A-. Mitchell Chaffee is a 25-year-old winger in the Wild organization. Decent numbers at the AHL level. Only two games played in the NHL and none this year. C. Boko Imama has very little NHL upside, but talk about a guy who's fought his way to the top. D. Nikita Okotiuk is now with San Jose, and while he doesn't show much offensive production historically, I think he could be a valuable depth defenseman. Unfortunately, the hobby doesn't exactly value that. C-. Andre Kuzmenko has smashed expectations this year for a tumultuous Vancouver Canucks team. He has 35 goals and 63 points in 70 games, and looks like a potential first-line winger for years to come. Great market with high expectations. Only thing keeping him from an A plus is that he is already 27 years old. So A. Jake Sanderson has shown terrific promise in his first NHL season. 29 points in 67 games is huge production for a 20-year-old defenseman. And if this trajectory continues, he could be an absolute monster of a player. A plus. Ben Jones is a 24-year-old centerman in the Calgary Flames organization. Decent AHL numbers, limited NHL action, C. Jacob Lauko is a 22-year-old centerman with five points in his first 16 NHL games. Great market and could very well be an NHL regular as soon as next season, B-. Philip Roos is a 24-year-old defenseman with three points in his first 17 NHL games and modest production at the AHL level, D+. Brant Clark is a 20-year-old defenseman with two points in nine NHL games. 
two points in five AHL games. And this season in the OHL, he has 61 points in 31 games. The former top 10 overall pick projects to be a top defenseman in Los Angeles in coming years, A-. minus. Victor Lodine is a 23-year-old centerman with 15 points in 28 AHL games this season. He played one NHL game last year and looks to me like another depth forward, C. David Yurichek, a 19-year-old Czech defenseman, has 34 points in 44 AHL games this year alongside no points in two NHL games. He had an equally impressive point-per-game pace for the second-place Czechs at the World Juniors, along with best defenseman of the tournament honors, A-. Corey Schooneman is a 27-year-old defenseman in the Canadian system that I feel has limited upside, but the market does help him a little bit, D+. Ali Lixell is a 23-year-old winger who's put up a near point-per-game pace in the AHL this season in his first year in North America. One point in eight NHL games, C+. Shane Wright was for the longest time going to be a number one overall pick. Then he wasn't, went to the AHL, got sent back to juniors, and there are many doubting him. However, I see a bright future for him, and the way he's continued to play despite the demotions is very encouraging. For me, he is still an elite-level talent and one of the few best rookies from this release, A+. Hunter Drew is a 24-year-old defenseman in the Chicago system who hasn't yielded much offensive promise this year and seems to have taken a step back from last year as well when he last played his first two NHL games. D. Philip Hollander is a 22-year-old centerman that is showing some potential in the Penguins' AHL affiliate Wilkes-Barre. He has 33 points in 40 games, and I wouldn't be surprised if he gets more shots of the big club as they continue to get older. B-. Nick Perbix came out of seemingly nowhere and has 19 points in 60 games in his first NHL season for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Really respectable numbers for a defenseman and interested to see if he can up that next season. B-. Linus Hogberg is a defenseman with limited offensive upside that is now back across the pond in Sweden. D-. Caden Gooley from Montreal has 18 points in 44 games this year as a 21-year-old defenseman. You guys know I love defensemen despite the limited love they get, but these are impressive numbers for a rookie, and what better place to do that than in Montreal? A-. Kevin Mandelazy, 22 years old, 3.26 GAA and a 9.16 save percentage this year in three games for the Senators. Goalies are unpredictable in their development. Solid start, though, so I'll give him a B-. Lucas Johansson is a 25-year-old defenseman that has really struggled in getting to the NHL. Once a former first-round pick, he really hasn't shown much upside, and the clock is now ticking fast. C-. Riley Walsh is a bit over half a point per game defenseman in the AHL, but has only one NHL game under his belt from last year. C-. Cole Kepke has one point in 17 NHL games this season. Not fantastic numbers in the AHL either. In my opinion, he maxes out as a depth forward, but stranger things have happened in Tampa Bay. C-. Grant Hutton is a 27-year-old defenseman that had one point in 17 NHL games last season and has seven points in 34 AHL games this season. None of this is promising. F. Declan Chisholm is a 23-year-old defenseman that has 43 points in 59 AHL games this season. Limited NHL action. Not sure where he fits in Winnipeg. C. Dmitry Samarukov is a 23-year-old defenseman in the Blues organization who has 16 points in 61 AHL games this year. C-. John Lazat is a 28-year-old defenseman that has played one NHL game and has no offensive upside. F. Elmer Soderblom is 6 foot 8, 250, 21 years old and has almost the exact same stat line in both the NHL and AHL this year with 5 goals and 3 assists in roughly 20 games. After a terrific SHL season last year, I think that Soderblom has a great opportunity in Detroit to be a key part of that top 6 as they develop. You know, it's another case of a guy just needing to grow into his size. B+. Plus. Arbor Jakai is an extremely popular player in Montreal and really the league. Great story, and he has 13 points in his first 51 NHL games. Not a bad stat line for a rookie defenseman. B. 
Michael Carson is 26 and having an absurd 70 point in 54 game year in the AHL. Three points in nine NHL games. Expectations are low here, but maybe a case of being a late bloomer? Time will tell. There was another Michael in an Arizona system that was a late bloomer. C+. Adam Hushka had a god-awful NHL debut and hasn't been back since. He's in the KHL, and he is putting up pretty solid numbers, but until he comes back over the pond, C+. Philip Kral is a defensive prospect of the Maple Leafs with no points in his first two NHL games and just six points in 21 AHL games this season. D+. Ethan Prow is a 30-year-old journeyman defenseman that had one goal in four NHL games last season. I hate giving anyone with a great story an F, but F. Ronnie Adderd had four points in 15 NHL games for the Flyers last season. However, he hasn't played a game with them this season. He is having a half point per game AHL campaign, C-. Jesper Froden is a 28-year-old forward that is now on the Seattle Kraken and has two points in nine games. He is a point per game at the AHL level, C-. Dylan Gunther, age 19, appeared in 33 games for the Coyotes this season and put up a respectable six goals and nine assists for 15 points. For a bottom-dwelling Coyotes team at the time, it was a sign of good things to come. You just have some concerns about the market. A. Casey Fitzgerald is a 26-year-old defenseman with limited offensive upside. D. Bowie the mascot. Normally, I defend upper deck, and mascots are a great subset, but putting Bowie in place of an actual rookie, honestly, I have no idea who made this call or why they made this call because this is an embarrassment in my opinion. Before you bring up Gritty, please know that he was an SP and not part of the Young Guns base set itself. F. Yurash Slavkovsky and Shane Wright checklist. Checklist sell, and you've got two hot names, B-. minus. So that just about wraps up Series 2. Overall, I think you have a much weaker checklist than Series 1. There are several big unknowns involved here as well. Let me know what you guys think down below. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, comment, and consider subscribing. It's free, helps the channel out a ton, and you can always change your mind later. Thanks for watching, everyone.